Finally, there evolved a species known as man. And there appeared the first faint glimmers of intelligence, fire, tools, and weapons, the hunt, farming, and the sharing of food, the family, the village, and the tribe. Now it required but one more ingredient, a great leader to unite the quarreling tribes, to harness the power of the land, to build a legacy that would stand the test of time, the civilization. It's always kind of a holy grail for, for designers, you know, make their, to make their civilization game. And to get to work with the Sid Meier's Civilization License is, you know, a real treat. Because that's a game that, you know, I spent many, many hours playing, you know, back in the day on my computer late at the night, and, you know, skipping my homework and things like that. One of the exciting things about this, having played so many different iterations of Sid Meier's Civilization, is that this captures a lot of the best of all of those games and puts them together in a really unique experience. It is civilization, but it's not the computer game. It's a unique experience that you have on the tabletop that gives you the experience of building your empire, your civilization, seeing if you can build the civilization that stands the test of time. Uh, one of the more appealing aspects of the game was, um, even though it's this huge overarching empire building game and you're spanning time, uh, it seemed like it played very quickly. It's kind of scaled down to an evening experience. You can have that full civilization experience that might take days or weeks on the computer, especially if you're playing multiplayer, and you can have that in one evening with your friends, and you can, uh, you can see the look of agony on their face as you march to glory. You know, you start out, you have one small city when you're just your capital, and you're kind of going to build up your empire and spread your influence throughout the world and there's other civilizations out there to, to meet and conquer or trade with. You're trying to become the greatest civilization in the world, lead your people to greatness and kind of go down in history as one of the, the greatest peoples who ever were. So now once you've got the game open and you know how to play, you're ready to go, each person picks their civilization that they want. You set up, you see, you see what resources or what special abilities you have to start at the game. Uh, the map gets set up and it gets set up randomly and you have a fog of war effect going on where the tiles are placed face down. Where the modular boards are, are really cool. I like those because um, they always change up what kind of world you're building and um, you have to uncover it and expand your empire that way. Each player is going to have a civilization which is going to have like a character sheet for that and then the home tile which is the place they this tile they always start on which is kind of custom custom designed for their their civilization it helps them out gives them stuff they need so one of the things that's really exciting about Civ Meyer civilization the board game is that it has four distinct paths of victory you can win either through military might the culture of your civilization you can win a tech victory or you can have an economic victory so there's four different ways to win the game. They're all very different, very distinct, and very interesting to, to explore. One of the, the tough one, and kind of the backbone of every civilization game out there, is the technologies. You know, the technology tree and, and the victory condition behind that. And kind of the big aha moment for me was when I came up with the idea of a tech pyramid instead of a tech tree. To grow and build other levels of technology, you have to build a base, so you have to have two level one technologies to build a level two technology, and then you have to have two level two technologies to build a level three, so you constantly have to build lower technologies to upgrade to higher technology, and that's a really cool aspect. So one of the exciting milestones of the game was to uh, fly out and visit the folks at Firaxis. Everybody at Firaxis was really friendly and really excited about it, and we kind of got the grand tour and they put us in this little glass room and we had you know, four play testers playing the game and they were all having a blast. And then every so often some of the other employees would come up and kind of press their face up against the glass and check out what we were doing. And you know, they showed us an early look at Civilization V, which was very cool. And you know, it was, it was a great trip. So we're known for doing extensive play testing on all of our games. It's a point of pride for us. Kevin just kept hammering at it and hammering at it, polishing it, refining it changing the combat system again to find just the right one, making the culture just a little bit different. 
and it really all came together at the end. Well, I hope that they say, wow, this is really civilization. This feels like Sid Meier's civilization. It feels like the game I've been wanting to play is a board game. I want them to, to walk away from it going, wow, you know, I want to play this again. And next time what I'm going to do is, you know, dot, dot, dot. And that's really what I want people to be thinking about is the next time they're playing the game.